Here we have a beam and a column structure and the question is the following structure is heated by 60 degrees Celsius. The steel beam has an I value of 90 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4 and the column has a cross-sectional area of 500 millimeters squared. Take the Young's modulus of steel to be 200 gigapascals and the coefficient of thermal expansion alpha steel is equal to 12 times 10 to the minus 6 per Celsius. What axial force will member BD feel due to this temperature increase? Give this problem a try for yourself, pause the video and come back to it when you're done. So let's solve this then. We know that a temperature increase of 60 Celsius multiplied by 12 times 10 to the minus 6 this is delta T and this is alpha multiplied by its uh, original length which was 3 meters and I'm going to write this in millimeters as you will find out why this will give us our new length let's calculate that 60 times 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times 3000 uh, so this will give us our extended length 2.16 millimeters so the column here after heating up will become 3002.16 millimeters tall the beam will also expand a little bit but as we'll find out this actually makes very little difference but for completeness let's do the let's do the beams calculation 60 oh, let me just write that column beam it will be 60 times 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times 4000 millimeters that is equal to 2.88 millimeters at the joint B right here we have this situation there will be a slight expansion so we have said that this will shift across a little bit, 1.44 millimeters. But what I will assume is that these are actually parallel to each other because that is such a small distance compared to its original length um, of 3000 millimeters that uh, for all intents and purposes, this will be parallel. We need to find what the column will will feel after it's uh, after it's been exp uh, heated up. The column feels like it wants to be three thousand millimeters long, three thousand and two millimeters long. But because it is being restrained by the beam there will be some compressive action and let's call that distance there x and that distance there will be 3002.16 minus x millimeters So what is that x value then? Well, we need to know um, 
what the force is, because force is, well, force is what we are trying to calculate, which is a function of that deflection. We know, in general, that for axial, fo axial forces and strains, the Young's modulus is equal to force times the length of the original member times cross-sectional area times the x value that we're trying to find. Let's rearrange this. E A X over L is equal to F. And this is what we're trying to find. This bit. Young's modulus, we know, and we're going to do this in kilonewtons and millimeters as our units. So 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared times area which we are told in the question 500 millimeters squared times this x which we don't know and the important part is this L value because the beam has already been heated up the the L value is 3002.16 And this will give us 200 times 500 divided by 3002.16. 33.3 times whatever x is, is equal to the force. Now, we, we need to find what the restraining load is from these beams. These beams will restrain the de uh, deflection, and how does it do that? Well, let's take uh, let's take a free body diagram. the The beam will want to put an, a restraining load in the middle, and so there is a there are these two reactions based on these two supports at the side at A and C. That restraining load I'm going to call F, and these are F over 2. What's the deflection of this virtual restraining load? The, the deflection goes downwards. It's a virtual load, but nonetheless, we're going to calculate it as going downwards. So the delta is equal to F L cubed over... 48EI for concentrated load. F is going to be equated to this axial load. That's the column is uh, already um, uh, is undergoing. So F we can actually substitute in this 33.3x. 33.3x L, okay, I'm going to take the expanded length, even though it will make very little difference. 2.88 millimeters is expanded. So this is actually um, 4,002.88 to the power of 3, divided by 48 times E, which is 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared times I of the beam which is 90 times 10 to the 6 90 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4 and what does that give us 4002.88 to the power of 3 times 33.3 .3 divided by 48, divided by 200, divided by 90 times 10 to the power of 6. So our delta is equal to 2.47x. Let's, let's put these all together then. <clears throat> At the center of the beam, let's just show you where I mean. At if I take a cross-section 
few, sorry, if I take a few writes there, oops, let's draw in the, uh, the original horizontal line. There will be, there'll be this line here. This value is, imagine if the beam were, uh, didn't exist or, or infinitely flexible, as we say. So this would be 2.16 millimeters, which is taken from this value up here. So that's the value if, uh, if the column were completely free to expand. And it's actually being pushed back down to its final position there. This value is the delta that we're trying to, uh, that we just calculated here. And this value here is our x, which is the real, um, which is the real compression uh, felt by, uh, felt by the beam. So let's equate this then. We have 2.16 millimeters minus delta is equal to x. We know the value of delta, so we can write 2.16 minus 2.47x is equal to x, which means that we have this situation, 2.16 is equal to 3.47x. Take the 3.47, oops, 2.16 divided by 3.47 is equal to x, and that, let's calculate that, 2.16 divided by 3.47, and that is equal to 0 0.622 millimeters. Bring this back here. Our our axial force is therefore 33.3 times 0 0.622 millimeters, and that is equal to 20.7 kilonewtons. And that is our final answer.